A session bean that holds information between method calls is a stateful bean. It holds its state. A stateful bean has to meet some special requirements, not the least of which is that there must be a separate instance of the bean for each user. In fact, there must be a separate instance of the bean just as you have separate instances of objects inside your application programs. Now, inside your program, you can drop an object by dropping the references to it, and the garbage collector knows when you're through and it comes and gets it. A stateful session bean has no way of directly detecting when you're finished with it, so a bit of fancy footwork takes place to figure out when it can be recycled. The bean is always in one of three states. It can be active, which means it's in memory and is running. It can also be passive, which means it has been stored in longer term memory, but can be brought back to active at any time. The third state is when the bean is dead and waiting for garbage collection. When your program first makes contact with a bean, it's created and stored in active memory. It stays there as long as you keep calling its methods from your program. It's possible for the bean to throw some kind of exception while executing a method call. When that happens, the bean is immediately removed from memory. The client can also call the remove method to remove a bean from memory. This causes the container to call the EJB remove method and kill the bean. Now, if you go for a long time without making a method call to the bean, the container calls EJB passivate and transfers the bean to passive storage. The amount of time the container takes before doing this is up to the configuration of the container. Passivation is like the serialization of the data contained in a bean. All the data is stored in a serialized form and the whole thing is stored away somewhere in case you may need it again. Now remember, some things can't be serialized, so you need to be careful here. It isn't that difficult if you have things like a connection to a database, or if you have a reference to a result set, you will need to store that away in some other way. You just need to keep the information on how the connection was made, or you can save the SQL statement that returned the result set. Transforming all of your data into a serializable form is the job you need to do in the method EJB Passivate. Any method that you call will cause a wake-up call to be issued first. If the client program calls a method while the bean is passive, a call is made to EJB Activate. It reverses the action taken by EJB Passivate, and the object is then moved back into memory. If you don't have any code in EJB Passivate, you won't need any in EJB Activate. Now here's another timeout situation. If a bean stays passive for a pre-configured period of time, it's automatically destroyed with a call to EJB Remove, and it's turned over to the local garbage collector. For the most part, you don't have to worry about it. Just store your data inside the stateful bean and use it any way you'd like. The only thing you have to watch out for are those data types that can't be serialized. For these, you'll need to drop them during passivation and reestablish them during activation. The rest is all automatic. Of course, depending on the application, you may need to adjust the timeout configuration settings in the server.